In this video, I'm going to be going over AWS's new cloud development kit. The CDK is a tool to define your cloud infrastructure in a traditional programming language that you're probably used to. The CDK supports a few different modern programming languages. Although it was written in TypeScript and a lot of the tutorials are for TypeScript, in this video, we're going to be using Python 3. Now, what do you get for using a traditional programming language instead of something like JSON or YAML? Well, the first big thing is you don't have to context switch. If you're writing your application in Python, you can also define your cloud infrastructure in Python. The next thing is you get all of the power that you get with a traditional programming language. Although things like the HCL has gotten a lot better, especially with the recent release of Terraform 12, you still can't beat the logic and flexibility you get with a traditional programming language. This means that you can use object-oriented techniques, you can integrate with your standard testing suites, and then you can also package up and share modules that you've created in the same way that you do with the application code you're writing. Now, an important note about the CDK framework is the infrastructure definition that you write is not actually getting executed to build the infrastructure. It's first converted to cloud formation, a process called synthesization. And then ultimately that cloud formation is run to deploy the infrastructure you define. So if you're hoping for the CDK to rid yourself with cloud formation, unfortunately the CDK is not gonna do that for you. But if you are looking for a tool that you can write your infrastructure definitions in a traditional programming language, I plan to do another tutorial on Pulumi, which has many of the same promises of the CDK, except it's not backed by CloudFormation. So please subscribe if you want to see that or other content like this. So to see how this all works in practice, we're going to be building a simple stack that deploys a static Hugo site to an S3 bucket behind a CloudFront distribution. If you would like to follow along, you need an AWS account that's still in the first 12 months of free tier, or you need to be willing to spend a bit less than five cents. But we'll be going over destroying everything when we're done. And you're also gonna need basic knowledge of AWS, Python, and basic software development workflows. Okay, we're gonna need a few things set up. I'll go over all of these quickly and show you how to check that they're in the right state, but there will be a link down below with better directions if you need help installing any of these programs. You're gonna need the AWS CLI with your AWS access key ID and secret access key correctly set up. We can check this with AWS dash dash version. You're going to need the Hugo static site tool. We can check this with Hugo version. And then you're going to need to have the CDK itself installed with NPM. So you'll also need NPM initially to install the CDK. We can at least check that the CDK is properly installed here with CDK dash dash version. Okay, so let's actually get hands on with it. We're going to make a directory called CDK, you can call this whatever you'd like, and then we're gonna CD into this directory. In this directory, we're gonna get clone an example Hugo site that I built. This page will be linked down below. And then we need to CD into this example site. We're just gonna check to make sure that it correctly runs with Hugo server dash D. As you can see, it compiles and builds the website, and then it's serving it at HTTP localhost port 1313. And we can see in a new tab that it's running a simple one-page static site. This is just a basic theme. There's no information here. It's just a basic static site to work with. We can stop this server with control C. Now that that runs, I'm going to change directories back into the root of our project directory, and then I'm going to make a new directory called static site. And then I'm going to CD into that new directory. In this directory, we're going to initialize a new CDK app. We can do that with CDK init dash dash language and Python for this being a Python project. We can hit enter. This is going to take a few minutes to run. Once it does, it will create a whole new file directory to work with. There are a few things we can go over there. And I'm going to open this all in a code editor. Okay, now in my code editor, I see that I have those two directories, one for the example site and one for the new static site we just built. The cdk init command creates a few different things. If we look at this cdk.json file, we see that we have an entry point defined with python3 app.py. If we look at the app.py file, this file creates the cdk app, and then this calls a module static site stack, which is also created in cdk init. Before we start adding some infrastructure code, we can set up the virtual environment that was created during the CDK initialization. We can do that by running source.env bin activate. Now, as you can see, we are in our virtual environment. 
And now the next step would be run the pip install requirements.txt. But let's just take a look at that requirements.txt. We see in here that it's just installing what's defined in the setup.py file. And if we look at the setup.py file in the install requirements, we have aws-cdk.core. That's what will be getting installed. So now let's run that right now. pip install requirements.txt. It's going to take a second. The last setup we need to do is we need to bootstrap our CDK environment. We can do that with CDK bootstrap. And then I'm going to define dash B and give this a unique S3 bucket name. This can be whatever you want. It just has to be unique. You actually don't have to define this. The CDK will create one automatically for you. Just for this tutorial, I've run this a few times and I've run into some issues. So I'm just defining a new bucket that's unique. If we reload our AWS console looking at Amazon S3, we see that it's created this bucket. This will be where our CloudFormation state will be held. Now for some of the CDK coding. We need to first create a bucket, open it up publicly, and have it serve the static website. Our code is going to be defined in this static site module that we created in this static site stack.py. In here, this is where we're going to add our code that defines the infrastructure that's going to be built with this module. We can find information on creating this S3 bucket in the AWS CDK API reference. If we scroll down and find a AWS underscore S3, if we click in here and go to bucket and coming to these documents, we can see how to properly create the bucket. So let's do that now. So first we need to actually install the AWS S3 CDK module. We can do that by going back to setup.py and adding aws-cdk.aws underscore s3, saving this file, and then running pip install again to pick up this new module that was added. Now that this module has been added to our virtual environment, we can import it into our Python file. We can now import it into our Python file as S3. And now we're ready to actually create our bucket. So we're going to create a variable called bucket equals S3 capital bucket. We're going to need to pass in a scope and we can do that with self. We're going to need to give it a unique ID. We're just going to call it site bucket for now. Now we're going to need to give it a unique bucket name. I'm going to call it CDK tut static site bucket 1219. You're going to have to pick a different name than me. This is globally unique. So you have to pick a value that's going to be unique completely to you. Next, we want to add public read access because we're going to be serving a static website. And then last, we want to define that this is going to be serving a static website. So there isn't just a simple option here to say, you know, website true. But if we define a website index document, that tells the S3 bucket that it is going to be serving that index document as a static website. So we can do that with website index documents. And then we can pick an index document that we're going to be using for us. It's going to be index.html. That's what our static site's going to be serving as the index. So now that we've created this bucket, we also want to output some info to our console when we run this and deploy it. If we look at the bottom of our AWS S3 docs, we see that the method that we're using has some attributes. We can use these to pass information out to the console we're using something a part of the core module called CFN output. In this output, we have to once again pass in scope with self and a unique ID. I'm going to call this one site bucket name. And then we're going to have to pass out a value. And then that value is going to be bucket dot bucket name. Now I'm also going to add right after this another CFN output called site bucket website and the only difference is a different id and then it's calling the bucket website url once again we found that at the bottom down here in the attributes right down here bucket website url so if we save this file now we can test our code changes if we come back to the console we can run a few different cdk commands 
CDKLS will just run through our code and spit out a list of the stacks. This also runs through all of our code and makes sure all the syntax is correct. If we run this, we see that we actually have an error. Got unexpected keyword argument website index documents. If we go back to our module itself, we can see website index document. I think this is website index document. If we delete that S, save, CDKLS. And now we see it spits out the name of the stack, which is just static site. I'm going to clear my screen. Now, next, we can create our cloud formation code with CDK synth. We actually don't need to do this because we define in our entry point app.py app.synth, but it's good for this example to show the CloudFormation output. As you can see, it just creates CloudFormation that defines our infrastructure. And then we also have CDK diff. This is similar to Terraform plan if you come from that world. For you, it should show nothing's changing, but for me, it's showing that it's removing this old bucket policy from past tests that I was running. Now, if everything looks good, we can deploy it with CDK deploy. It asks us to confirm our changes. I'm going to say yes with a Y and then hit enter. And this is now executing the cloud formation that we built. Now that this has been deployed, we can see that everything was properly created. And then it also gives us two different outputs. One of them is our bucket name, and one is the website static site URL, which we're going to use both of these in a bit. So if we come back to our console, if we CD back to the root of our project directory, and then now into the example site directory, in here, we're going to be building our static site. We can do that with just running Hugo. As we can see that it was built with a total of 156 milliseconds. Now, this is building it into the public folder. If we look, it's going to be right here. And then it builds our static site resources to be deployed to this site. So to upload this to the S3 bucket, I'm just going to run an AWS CLI command. I'm going to run AWS S3 sync and then the folder. And then now we need to specify the S3 bucket, which we can do with S3 colon slash slash the name of our bucket. I'm going to copy up here, paste right there. And then I'm also going to provide an ACL with public read. Just an access control list so we can publicly serve our website. And now if we come back to our outputs from our CDK deploy, we can now grab our static site URL. If I copy that, and we go up to our web browser and I'm going to paste that into a new window. We see that we're now serving our static site on our S3 bucket, no longer locally. Now we're going to want to put this behind a CloudFront distribution to use as our site's CDN. We want to once again add a new AWS module to our setup.py file. Now it's going to be aws-cdk.aws CloudFront. And then I like trailing commas. And now we're going to come back to our CLI and we're going to CD back into our static site directory. And then now run pip install to install this new module we just added to the setup.py. Now that that's been installed, I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to go back to our static site module, and then I'm going to now add our AWS CloudFront import at the top, and I'm going to import it as CF to make things easier. So in here, we're going to create a distribution, and we can do that with web distribution and then this takes once again a scope which is going to be self it takes an id which i'm going to call uh static site dist and then it's going to need origin configs basically what is the origin of this cloudfront distribution we can define that with origin configs And then now I'm going to have that equal a list, oop, a list. And in that list, I'm going to be putting 
a variable called source config. This source config, I'm going to define right above this distribution. And this source config is going to be equal to a cf dot source configuration. Hopefully I spelled that right. And then in here, we need to define the source. And we can do that with s3 underscore origin source equals cf dot s3 origin config. And then in this s3 origin config, we can pass in the s3 bucket. And with that, we can just take our bucket from up here. So we can just say bucket. Now we can add a comma. And then the source configuration actually needs one other argument, and that's behaviors, which is once again going to be a list. And then in here, we're going to be CF behavior, and then we're going to say is default behavior equals true. So this is going to set the default behaviors for this CloudFront distribution. And then once again, we want to add two outputs. I'm just going to copy and paste these in because they're kind of verbose. So the first one here is going to have the ID static site distribution ID, and it's going to be the distribution ID. And then the second one is going to be the distribution domain name. So we're going to save this and I'm going to run CDKLS because I probably spelt like half those things wrong because Code completion wasn't fully working for me. Uh, can I import, import main? Oh, that would help. Not an expected argument S3 bucket. So it looks like this needs to be S3 bucket source. I forgot saying source there. No app for CloudFront web distribution. Oh, I spelled it wrong. There we go. Now we see that it's listing the site. That means it probably can run through my code now. So what we're going to do is CDK diff. And now we see that it's just adding this CloudFront distribution. And then it's going to have these two outputs that we defined. So now that it looks good, we can do CDK deploy. Now this one's going to take a really long time. Um, it could be upwards of like 10 to 15 minutes. The CloudFront distribution takes a while to come up. So cool. Once this is fully created, we can take the distribution URL that's output to us, put it into our web browser, and we now see our site is being served over our CDN. Now, the real power in this layout that CDK has presented us, we can now use this module and recreate this infrastructure multiple times. So if we make a slight modification and we don't hard code the bucket name anymore, and we can do that by passing the bucket name into the constructor, we're now no longer hard coding our values in this module. So if we wanted to go back into app.py, we could actually loop through and create, you know, multiple different buckets just using the same module and the CDK will understand that and create the proper cloud formation. Now, if we add another bucket name and we loop through the bucket names and pass those in to our module, when we run CDK LS now, it shows us two different stacks. Once you're all done, you can clean up all of this with CDK destroy. You might need to go into the console and destroy the bootstrap bucket as well if you want that gone. You've now built some infrastructure with Python using the AWS CDK. Hopefully this was a good introduction to get you on your way. Please feel free to subscribe and check back if you want more content like this. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.